everybody's learned from this nation. Uh, the beginnings of hip hop culture. You see, its foundation start with the gods. I have, you know, we all know that, that, you know, most of the rappers, you know, in order to get their rap sounding better, they would use our names, our language, and blah, 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 blah. However, I can share a story with you about um, the oncoming of that culture. But, um, when I first was getting nod to self, I used to hang in the Patterson Projects. See, that, um, our sister that went back to the SSY t yes. that's where I met her. This is in, uh, this is in 1966, 1967, right here in Pilon. Oh, okay. Right here in Pilon, 143rd, 143rd, 3rd Avenue. Okay. The 15 bus go by there. Okay. Over there. Okay. Now, what I'm saying about that, see, in that project, the Patterson Project, I'm going to drop this real quick, in terms of hip hop and rap. Back in the 60s, 1966, 1967, I was hanging there. Uh, I was teaching in there. That's how Watisha, I told Watisha, her family, um, a lot of brothers that was getting knowledge yourself. What happened is that, like I said, I, uh, brother A. Marjorie Hart, uh, a lot of the young brothers that time, a lot of people that came to the nation that time that wasn't no, that had stayed too long, but for a while they was with us and it was a group of us that used to go across the bridge every day, into the projects and hang out there where we met there some of their females. And so a lot of the guys in the project didn't like it. They said, who's these guys? And then they hear our names and they hear what we got to say. Yes, it attracted people, you know, but we were you know, quoting the lessons and we were manifesting something different from them. So it was attractive to them. So, it, but at the same time, it caused friction because you know they wanted to have a war with the guards up there. And you know, one day I remember one day the guards was on this side of the court, sit down, and the project people was on that side of the court. And we were waiting for you know a war to start. That didn't happen. You know, for you know it happened, didn't happen. But the thing about it is that. At, you know, to give all respect to, you know, at that time in the 60s, like if you lived in a Pacific project, that thing went you around there, you don't come around there. Right. Because each project had a reputation. And Patterson definitely had a reputation, but they used to fight with other projects, and what they used to do, it, their strategy was to try to corner the other project in the back. The back was where all the factories was, and the train tracks and stuff, so those streets was funny. You could even get trapped off. But anyway, I learned all that because eventually I, Amar, we used to hang out in the projects every day, 24-7, like we lived there, and we had respect, we hung out with them, they hung out with us, and we got, you know, you know, that was my hangout spot for a while, so I um, became a part of that. Now, in their community center, they had their own, there was, each project at that time had a community center. All projects had a community center, and during the 60s, most of the time, they was active. And this passion project, we go there every day in the evening time for night center. You know, we dance, play records, hang out, blah, blah, blah. But we had a, a club, it was about 40 of us, called the Rum Brothers Incorporated. The Rum Brothers Incorporated was named all the Bacardi Brothers, named after the drink, Bacardi. Because that's what we was drinking. We was teenagers. So we was drinking Bacardi with the Rum Brothers Incorporated, but we had this rap. This record out at the time for Motown called Function at the Junction by Shorty Long. Okay. It go, get ready for a function at the junction. So people, you better come on now, now. We got people coming from everywhere. Long talks out. You know how it go. But anyway, we had a rap to that. Because most of the people still in school, so we had raps about, oh, oh get that teacher, yeah, who stole the reaper, yeah, who ba ba ba, yeah, to the beat of that song. Mm. And you know, it was a whole rap, and everybody knew it, and we could sing it all at the same time, every time that record would come on, the whole center would be singing that song, and when we go out to other parties, and that record come on, we did the same thing. So, and this was back in the 60s, like I said, 1966, 1967, for sure. And rap at that time was really 
almost becoming a foothold in the Bronx because different people's popping up with different things. But I'm saying that part of the rap game in for sure because the only people that was rapping other than that time was the last poets coming in together, Gil Star Her and other people like that, which is very, very few to count on one hand. So that's history. History, history on hip hop. History on hip hop. One of the untold stories. This is long before Crew Her came out. It's a long before Crew Her came that's a controversial statement, though. <laughs> well, I'm not, gonna I'm not trying to create controversy. I'm just saying what I know, and I might be wrong, and I stand to be corrected if I am. Okay, well, I agree with that. I agree with that. Please, 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 please. If Mega did this.